Tokyo Electric Power Company has submitted the results of stress tests on two nuclear reactors along the Sea of Japan coast. The company says the reactors can withstand an earthquake 1.3 times stronger than they were designed to. TEPCO on Monday gave the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency the result of tests on the number one and number seven reactors at the Kashimazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant in Niigata Prefecture. The tests are preconditioned for restarting the reactors. TEPCO claims the reactors could endure a tsunami of up to 15 meters, nearly five times higher than the safety standard set by the company. We consider the two reactors more than safe enough. We want to explain the results to local residents and authorities. We also want to consult with them about how to proceed. Niigata Governor Hirohiko Izumida says it's still too early to decide whether to restart the reactors. Doing stress tests is better than nothing. Of course, TEPCO has to factor in what really happened at Fukushima Daiichi. Otherwise, what's the point in having this kind of computer simulation? Japan's utilities have submitted stress test results for 14 reactors. That's nearly 30% of the reactors that have been shut down for inspections. In other news, a group of Tokyo Electric Power Company shareholders plans to file a lawsuit against a number of the utility's current and former executives as early as late January over the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear crisis. Last November, 42 shareholders asked the company's auditors to file a lawsuit against 60 people who have held executive posts. The shareholders believe that the executives were negligent and are seeking a total of 5.5 trillion yen or more than $70 billion in compensation. On Monday, TEPCO notified the shareholders in writing that it will not cooperate in taking legal action against the executives. The utility argues that the scale of the March tsunami was unforeseeable. So the executives cannot be responsible for the nuclear disaster. A lawyer representing the shareholders criticized TEPCO auditors for claiming the tsunami could not be predicted and for expressing no remorse. High levels of radioactive cesium have been detected in a new apartment building in Fukushima Prefecture. The source is most likely gravel from the evacuation zone around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Gravel from the same area has been shipped to at least 200 construction firms. The government is trying to find out where it's been used. The three-story apartment building in Nihonmatsu City was completed last July. Twelve units are occupied. The city detected levels of radioactivity on the first floor at up to 1.24 microsieverts per hour, well above the radiation level of the surrounding area. It's better to move out, but honestly, I feel so lost. I'm shocked. I don't feel safe living here. The discovery came after regular city checkups found that children in the building have been exposed to more radiation than other children over a three-month period. City spokespersons say gravel used to build the first floor came from a quarry in Namiya town in the evacuation zone near the crippled plant. The industry ministry found that gravel from the quarry was shipped to at least 200 construction firms. Shipments were complete before the area was made a no-go zone, but some gravel was left out in the open after the nuclear accident. The ministry is also checking other firms as there are six quarries in the evacuation zone. We didn't know why the radiation was so high. It didn't change even when we cleaned the floor. We had no idea what was going on. We were stunned. The firm was given no information on the spread of radiation from the government. It had no idea its gravel would be contaminated. The U.S. says it will continue to help Japan deal with the effects of last year's disaster. The country's ambassador to Japan pledged assistance with nuclear issues and rebuilding efforts. Ambassador John Roos on Monday visited Fukushima Prefecture with experts from the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission and the U.S. Department of Energy. It was his first visit to the prefecture since the disaster last March.
Reuters inspected the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. He also visited Iwaki City, where evacuees from the no-entry zone live in makeshift houses. We will continue to work um, with the uh, with people in this area in order to contribute in any way we can. Bruce told NHK that the visit made him realize the urgent need to help evacuees. The latest figures on Japan's machinery orders were released this morning, showing the first rise in three months. The cabinet office said major machinery makers received nearly 790 billion yen, or about $10.2 billion, in domestic orders in November. That is an increase of 14.8 percent from the previous month in yen terms. The figure excludes volatile orders for ships and power plants.